Hello everyone, my name is August. Now, little known fact about me, I love strategy games. Now, I wasn't always like this, you know, back in the day I was more of an FPS guy. I liked games like Team Fortress 2, Overwatch, Apex Legends, and so on and so forth. But then I decided to actually start liking myself and steer away from those types of games into more strategy focused games. Games like XCOM, which you all know is one of my favorite games of all time, and the Total War series, specifically Warhammer Total War. These, those are fantastic games. And these games helped me scratch an itch that first person games just weren't giving me. Uh, along, of course, with Darkest Dungeon, which is one of my favorite games of all time. You've all seen my Darkest Dungeon video, and you've heard me rave about how much I love this game, and it's dark, gritty attitude, and it's tough-as-nails combat, and it's horrible, terrifying stress mechanic. It's a game that I hold near and dear to my heart. It is one of my all-time favorite games, and I sank so many hours into that game. So, when Darkest Dungeon 2 came out, I was ecstatic. And I played it, I played a lot of it, through Early Access and now to its final release, and uh, how do I feel about it? Well, let me just start by saying that Darkest Dungeon 2 is a game that I've had lots of back and forth about. On one hand, it doesn't really feel like a true continuation of the series. The once slower paced dungeon crawl where you slowly level up your heroes and experience immense loss has been replaced with a faster, snappier roguelike that puts you through a gauntlet of combat and hard decisions as you try to reach the end, the mountain. But did I enjoy the game? You bet your fucking ass I liked Darkest Dungeon 2. Holy shit. This game is fun. Darkest Dungeon 2, or as I'll sometimes call it, DD2, is a roguelike turn-based action game where you take a group of downtrodden adventurers and send them into the void of madness to fight the most horrible, terrifying, and repulsive creatures you can comprehend. You will have to stick with this group of fucking insane people through all their triumphs and failures as you try to reach the mountain, a dark pinnacle of all your failures to fight horrible reflections of your own madness. Yeah, it's definitely still a Darkest Dungeon game. But you know, enough, enough fooling around, enough tugging back and forth, let's just jump right into the meat of this game. Let's talk about DD2, Darkest Dungeon 2. DD Darkest Dungeon, let's talk about it. Now the first thing that we have to talk about is the aesthetic. Does Darkest Dungeon 2 look as good as the first game? Yes. In fact, it looks way better than the first game. DD2 has taken that dark, grungy aesthetic that the first game had and has just built on it to a wonderful level. The character models in this game look better than ever, showing off these heroes in a new light we've never seen them before, giving them even more personality. You know, the first game everyone looked kind of like little cute chibi versions of themselves but here they are fully realized in full 3d and they just look amazing there's so much personality in each of these characters their idol animations their combat animations and even their voice lines are unique sometimes take for example the plague doctor good old pd she is a hunched little gremlin woman because that's just who she is as a person, and she will rummage through her bag during combat so she can find different tonics or potions to use during said combat, and also just the way that she moves around, she looks like she's constantly about to scuttle away into the darkness like a little rat bastard. It's, it's great, I love it. Or take, for example, the Grave Robber, you know, a very sophisticated, fine woman. You know, she likes vintage alcohol and her pretty knives. She stands with a lot of confidence as her hair sways back and forth, and whenever she's in combat, she'll flash her knives out before she makes an attack. 
or we can look at the absolute giga chad that is the bounty hunter i mean look at this guy he's just a fucking unit i don't i don't even need to say anything just man what's his workout routine because holy shit do you see his arms but as this video goes along just just notice how much personality is in each of these character models the way that they move the way that they act whenever you select one of their skills the way that they react to getting hit it's it's great jester giggles whenever he gets hit by damage it's it's so good they've added so much more personality to these characters and i really have to commend red hook for that it's it's great how they took these already established characters and made them even better so overall the new aesthetic with the new characters is great but what about the sound design and the music it's it's also fantastic uh, attacks are big and punchy making these harsh booms when you score a critical hit uh, enemies make these horrible squelching and shrieking sounds as they attack you and the music The music in Darkest Dungeon is phenomenal. Uh, video game music is the most slept on thing in this world, uh, and I will stand by that. Uh, because this soundtrack fucking bangs. The harsh strings and foreboding horns make combat feel so intense and raw. My personal favorite track is uh, the Shroud's combat music because uh, it's fun and nautical, and it makes me feel like a pirate, which makes sense because there's like weird eldritch pirate people in that region. My main point is that the music is just awesome, and the sound design is great, everything feels uh, evil, sinister, raw, violent, it's, it's great, it's perfect. And that combined with the still dark grungy art style, it makes for a very, very unique world. And that is one thing I will always commend Darkest Dungeon on, is they have the world, the aesthetic, and the art design down. You know what a Darkest Dungeon game looks and sounds like before you even pick it up. So, you know, visuals are great, music's great, sound design's great, all very important things about a video game. But August, what about the combat? Is it hard? Is the game hard, August? Yes. Yes, it's fucking hard. Oh my god. This game will bend you over backwards and slap your ass so hard you won't be able to walk for the next week. Darkest Dungeon 2, in my opinion, is much harder than the first game. This combat works a bit differently. It's still turn-based, and there's still ranks, and, you know, bleed and skills and diseases and quirks, they're all still present in the game, but the newest mechanic is the token system. So, in the previous game, whenever you would buff or debuff a target, it was just percentage changes, you know, plus 15% to hit here, minus 10% dodge here, but in DD2 we have these new tokens that are just flat buffs or penalties. All skills in the game have a 100% chance to hit, but this guaranteed to hit is offset by things like blindness or dodge tokens, which cut your chance to hit in half or more. Crit tokens will make sure your attacks or heals are guaranteed to score a critical hit, because you know it's a crit token, so... Yeah, that makes a lot of fucking sense, doesn't it? Or, weakness tokens will lower the damage of your next attack. There's a good chunk of tokens, and they all blatantly state what will happen to the character that has them, and overall, I really like this new system. The, the token system feels a lot more fair, in my opinion. Coming from a game like XCOM, it's really, really annoying when your character suffers like some percentage chance to miss. Like, oh no! My guy has a minus 5 to hit the alien that's clearly standing in front of him. He has a 95% chance to hit. 
I sure hope he doesn't miss. He's gonna fucking miss. But, you know, in Darkest Dungeon, I can clearly see on the bottom of my character's bar that they have these tokens. And I know what's gonna happen if I try to do things with these tokens active. It's just a lot more clear, it feels a lot more fair, and dodge token is a fucking myth. Dodge token does not work for me. It only works for enemies. I swear to god, there is some conspiracy theory that's stopping my dodge tokens from working. Because I will stack three 75% dodge tokens on my grave robber, and then she'll get hit by every single attack. It's... <sighs> Sometimes you just can't win. Sometimes you just can't win. Now, there are still percentage buff changes, and you can see these by little gold arrows next to your hero's health bar, or blue arrows if it's a downgrade, but the majority of stuff is done through these tokens. Now, when it comes to actually exploring the world, you don't click on a different region and then just go to it. Uh, you travel through the regions through your stagecoach, which I forgot the name of. It's called, like, the... 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 Wayne Wright? Is that it? Is it the Wayne Wright? I think it's the Wayne Wright. We're just gonna go with it and say it's the Wayne Wright. Now, on your stagecoach, you will travel through the different regions, and once you get to the end, you'll go into something called a tavern, where your heroes can rest and recuperate before going on to the next region. After you complete a certain number of regions, you'll finally arrive at the mountain where the final boss is. Now, traveling through regions isn't simple. There's a lot of roadblocks to stop you. Uh, literal roadblocks. Uh, bandits and zombies will hop out of trash cans to assault your group sometimes. You'll have to fight big event battles. You'll have to, you know, brave through rough terrain or surprise attacks. And sometimes you'll go through a dark fire that makes your characters actually go insane. Uh, loathing sucks. I fucking hate loathing. Never pick. Never pick. The, uh, the option for a region that has the, the fucking, like, plus 50% loathing, uh, it sucks. It's horrible. It never ends well. Now, when it comes to the actual fighting, it's still very fun and challenging. Heroes now have a much larger variety of skills at their disposal, and they can pull off some wild, wacky moves during combat. Each hero plays differently, and throughout all my runs, uh, no hero really felt like they played like another. There were definitely some that I thought filled specific roles better than others, but for the most part, every character feels unique and different to play with all of their different skills and abilities. And with all these new skills and abilities, it opens the door for a lot more creative team building, even more than Darkest Dungeon 1, which is great. There's a new path system, which allows a certain character to fill a specific role you want even better. And, of course, there's the return of quirks, positive and negative, and, of course, diseases. Trinkets also make a return, as well as the brand new combat items, which are little free gadgets or gizmos you can use during combat to give your team a little bit of a boost. Overall, these new characters are pretty well designed when it just comes to their kit. Uh, again, like, none of the heroes really feel like they play like another hero. They all feel unique. If you want to do burn damage, you bring Runaway. If you want to be a sneaky, stabby bitch, you bring Grave Robber. Grave Robber. <laughs> oh, Grave Robber. You know, people think that she's a bad character. You know, I see I see so many people saying, oh, you know, Grave Robber's C tier, B tier. You know, she's not that great. Uh, that's some bullshit. Uh, that's some bullshit. Grave Robber fucking carries me. I You, you put Night Sword on her, and you just do the lunge spam, and you'll just delete creatures from existence. It is so funny. And in honor of the grave robber, here is a compilation of her fucking shit up. <laughs> Why is she so good? Grave Robber, I will never doubt your abilities. Except when you miss like the 46% chance to crit. That, that does get a little irritating when that happens. But you know, I understand it. With all of this, the skills, the trinkets, the paths, combat items, quirks, and relationships. Oh, the relationship mechanic. I almost forgot to talk about the relationship mechanic. That's right, your team can either grow to love each other or fucking despise each other. 
there is a new relationship mechanic in this game. And when certain events happen or certain things happen during combat, it can either increase or lower two characters' relationship. If the relationship is high enough, they will form a bond and they'll buff up each other's skills. But if they fucking despise each other, they will actually grow to despise each other and lower each other's skills. The relationship mechanic is... Uh, I, I have my opinions about it, but uh, enough about the good guys. Let's talk about the baddies. Let's talk about the bad guys. Enemies in this game are still scary. Oh boy, they're scary. I mean, look at these horrible, freakish things. I mean, what the fuck even is that? Uh, huh? I'm very glad that, again, the design and art direction team at Red Hook has, again, knocked it out of the park with these enemy designs. They look fucking disgusting, and that is what I like to see in my Darkest Dungeon game. Now, obviously, the disturbing enemy variety is amazing, but how do they actually play? They will hurt you. Enemies in this game feel like they have a lot more synergy with one another, with some being able to buff up each other, or guard, or... Uh, eat each other for buffs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cannibalism. We're going there. Each region you power through will have different sets of enemies you will have to fight and power through to reach the end. And every single region's specific enemies have unique abilities and quirks. Plague Eaters can eat corpses to power up for big attacks and heals. They're also the worst enemy in this game. Uh, not from, like, a gameplay perspective. I mean, like, I actually don't want this Nurgle motherfucker near me because it is... Why is there so much teeth on it? The cadavers of the Tangle are these hardy soldiers, and because of that, they can issue orders to one another, and they have really strong footing, and it's hard to make them fumble around their, their party structure. It, it's great. Uh, also, they bleed you a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. Uh, and oh my god, there is this combination where the drummer will issue an order to the arbalist, and then the arbalist will AoE hit your entire group with a serrated bolt that does like 20 damage and then like bleeds everyone for 5. It's the most terrifying ability in this entire game. I, I do not know how to counter it most of the time. And there's also the Fisher Folk, which are the most annoying fucking enemies in this entire game. Uh, I hate the Fisher Folk. Uh, they don't even do anything crazy, they just... I just don't like them. They're just very mean to me, and I don't appreciate it. And of course, we have your basic enemies. You have your bandits, you have your zombies, you have monsters in the beast dens, and the beast dens are these specific areas where you can fight these waves of monsters, and then you can get a special item that gives you bonuses. There's a good amount of enemies. Oh, also the Shambler's back. Yeah, Shambler's back, and he is, he's even scarier than he was before. Uh, yeah, Shambler. But I'm very impressed with all the different enemy types. They feel so much better than they were in Darkest Dungeon 1, and that is a good thing. The enemy variety in this game has been vastly improved. Everyone feels dangerous. Everyone feels like they can do something cool or unique or scary, and everyone looks horrible. It's great. I wish that they did have the Madman return, though. I really liked the Madman. He was he was a little silly. I kind of liked him. I wish he was in the second game. Now, obviously, these are all just your regular fodder enemies, but in each region, there is a main boss enemy that you can fight. They are at the end of these little mini gauntlets where you have to fight through a couple of waves of enemies, and then at the very end, you can fight the boss. Bosses in this game are... Again, much harder than the bosses in Darkest Dungeon 1. They have so many horrible nightmarish abilities, it is insane. And unlike the first game, where you could kind of exploit a boss's weakness and, you know, kind of counteract their mechanic, uh, in this game, that's not the case. Uh, bosses have so many different ways to counter what you're trying to do. It is insane, and you'll have to be adaptive, and you'll have to change your strategy on the fly, and fighting bosses is difficult, but so much fun. And another thing is you have to at least fight one of these bosses and beat them, because whenever you beat a boss, you get a trophy. And this trophy applies a buff and a debuff, because 
Starkest Dungeon and nothing can ever be a straight up buff in this game. And you need one of the boss's trophies to enter the mountain. So you have to beat one of the bosses because if you can't, you can't fight the final boss and then you'll have to reset when you get to the mountain region. So you're gonna have to fight someone uh, and make sure that you do not fight the Leviathan because the Leviathan sucks. I hate the Leviathan. Just the shroud, it has, it has my favorite music. But, oh my god, all the enemies in that fucking region make me want to pull my hair out and claw my eyeballs out. You know, being in the Shroud gave me real-life stress damage. Now then, what about the stress mechanic, which is arguably the most important mechanic in all of Darkest Dungeon? Well, it's back, and stress is still a big old knife in your dick in this game. Stress is now represented by these ten little boxes. And, much like the first game, when your meter fills all the way up, your character will have a meltdown. This causes your hero to take a ton of damage and basically ruin their relationship with all of their other teammates. Now, there is still the option to go virtuous, but a lot like the first game, going virtuous is pretty rare, and it is much more likely that you are going to have a meltdown. So, of course, you're going to have to keep your stress low. Gaining stress in this game is, is pretty easy. Uh, whenever an enemy just drops the nuke on you, uh, your character will just start screaming and sobbing and yelling about how they want to go home and be held by their mommy. Um, and so you're, you're going to need ways to lower your stress. Now, thankfully, there's a lot of characters that have ways to lower their stress or teammate stress. Uh, or there's the Jester, who is still just the fucking MVP of this game because the Jester will just look at that stress and be like, no, you're actually fine. You do not feel fear. I'm going to play you a silly little tune on my loot, and you're going to be just fine. And then everyone's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, actually, that's that's a pretty good song. Yeah, I'm not stressed anymore. Uh, Jester, Jester's still great. He just he just does everything. You know, he can bleed. He can stress heal. He can buff. He can move. He can blind. Just Jester. Grave Robber is my first love. Jester's my second. So, overall, combat's great. It's just Darkest Dungeon 1 combat, but better so much better but what about my complaints because i've mentioned throughout this video that i've had my back and forths on the game and there are some things that i don't really agree with so what are my complaints well my main two complaints about this game is firstly the classes now i know what you're thinking august you literally just said like 10 minutes ago that all the classes in this game are super unique and well designed and yes, they are unique and well-designed in their flavor and their skills. But when it comes to efficiency... Eh. For example, Man-at-Arms is just way too good. He can tank, he can buff, he can repost, he can even be a damage dealer. Highwayman is just so goddamn consistent with his damage output, it's hard to validate any other DPS on your team. Plague Doctor is stupidly efficient. She can heal you for large amounts, she can apply dot damage, she can remove dot damage, and she can even be a melee powerhouse if you give her the fucking surgeon path and then just have her spam incision. And Jester just is a master. He's just a G. He just, he just goes to town, giving everyone buffs, lowering stress. It's just that some characters in this game just feel like they're more efficient and their kits allow them to do more than other characters. Like, I've almost never taken Runaway, Occultist, or Leper. And it's not because I, I don't like these characters, like, I, I fucking love Leper. Everyone loves Leper, it's the fucking Leper. But every single time I run them, I just don't get as much mileage out of them. And maybe I'm just playing them wrong, or I'm just not using the right build for them but it feels like I have to put way much more effort into making certain characters perform well opposed to others. And yes, I know that a lot of people have had success with these less efficient characters. Yes, I've seen the one-man leper Giga Chad solo all the bosses without breaking a sweat and he goes virtuous like three times in the video. But for the most part, the majority of players agree that some classes just need a, a little bit of a boost in combat. More of a reason to actually take them over others. Another problem I have is the game can kind of feel a little repetitive sometimes. Now, being a roguelike, you're going to play through the same experience multiple times. That's just the nature of these kinds of games. But DD2 feels so... I don't want to say boring sometimes, 
Like, for example, I can play Risk of Rain 2 four hours. I can have a three hour run, get ruined in a second, and then immediately want to start another three hour run. But in Darkest Dungeon 2, when I lose a long run, I just feel so defeated. Like, instead of getting excited about making a new crazy build, I just groan sometimes because I have to push myself through the entire region again just to try and attempt to fight the final boss. Now, this may just be a me problem, but I do think DD2 needs a little bit more variety from run to run. I'm not sure what that would be, but from my experience, I just if I just lose one good run in a bad way, I just don't have the energy to try again. Also, a small little nitpick is whenever you lose a hero and then you go to the tavern, they give you a new hero uh, to replace them. But I, I wish you could pick what hero you wanted. Because sometimes you just get a hero that does not fit the build at all, and it's basically run ruining. Uh, I'm looking at you, leper that decided to join my dance team. But those complaints aside, I, I really like Darkest Dungeon 2. They improved a lot on character customization, and they improved combat a whole lot. It feels more intense, more interactive, and just more punchy in general. Do I think it's really a Darkest Dungeon game? Eh, I that's debatable, but if Red Hook decides to make another game in the Darkest Dungeon universe, I hope that they take the slower paced, more dungeon crawly aspects of Darkest Dungeon 1 and combine it with the faster, snappier, more interactive combat that Darkest Dungeon 2 has. And if you combine both of those experiences into one, I am going to be a very, very happy person. There's a lot of good ideas here, it just needs a little bit more work to be perfect. I honestly don't think that Darkest Dungeon works as a roguelike game. I think it works better more as a roguelite game. But with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Please hit like and subscribe if you did, uh, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye